Hey y'all, this is David, the Georgia Photographer, and today I got fun stuff to talk about. To start with, I have a package that I got from Cuban Rum. He sent me some stuff, and I wanna kinda go over what we got here. He, um, first of all, first and foremost, he sent me a Nikon and larger lens. Okay, for those that don't know, most of you probably do, Back in the days of film, you developed the film and then you developed the prints with the film. So you had this thing called an enlarger. It's kind of like an overhead projector, but it projected down instead of up onto the wall like we did when we was in school. You put one of these lenses in it, depending on what you wanted to print, and you put your print paper that's unexposed down on the bottom, and then you put your slides in right above your lens and it would project through that lens down onto the paper. Well, this is one of those special lenses for a uh, photo enlarger. And it comes in the display case, which is the hard shell case to protect it from dust. Enlarger lenses don't have focus helicoids because they are designed <clears throat> to be focused with the enlarger. So that's a 50 millimeter f2.8 lens. Look how tiny this lens is. I was talking to Aaron, and Aaron was like, get you one of these macro focus helicoids. It allows you to drive the focus on the lens, all right? And you can just screw it on it because it's a M thread mount, M thread mount. Problem is, I didn't pay attention and measure this. This is M39, this is M42. So I had to order this tiny piece of metal to adapt this thread to this thread. And now it'll fit on my Z6 and it has focus. This will most likely, this is gonna allow me to do pretty heavy hitter macro work if I'm guessing right. Now it still has the aperture ring on it. That's what the front ring is. It controls aperture and it's whole stops, F2, 8, 4, 5, 6, 8, 11, and 16, and they're very clearly marked, so you know which one you're on. And the optics are like brand new. There's no telling how old this lens is. But on top of this enlarger lens, he sent me a microfiber because as he puts it, I bought a box of a hundred of them and now I just give them away. I use these regularly. I'm all the time screwing up and touching my lenses. That thing, those things are a lifesaver to have in your bag. And then he sent me a bunch of prints. Okay. And also, um, the first one I'm going to go to is this one. All right. This print, let's see if I can get it to show a little better. There you go. Is of an alligator at an alligator farm doing a mating call. And what it's doing is it's vibrating its whole body and you can see the water agitating around it as it does this. And he actually caught that on camera. I thought that was pretty interesting. And here's an alligator on the side of the road in the Everglades. Dude, I'll be honest with you. It took a brave man to get out of the car and get that close to an alligator that big. I mean, there's nothing between you and it except air. I'll be honest with you. I would not be interested in doing that. <laughs> and then, let's see, a black and white of a bench at Fort Jefferson. I love black and white photos. This is really cool. Now, there's a chain on this bench. I don't know if you saw it. And as he puts it, amazing national park and literally in the middle of the ocean with lots of history. Most likely, it's to chain down the bench so the hurricanes don't blow. The chain is to chain down the bench so the hurricanes don't blow it away is what, it's, what most likely is the reason it's there. <laughs> I, love, I love black and white photos. And then we have a picture of the Everglades. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Honestly, you've heard me say this a hundred times. I believe that, can, that one could be framed. I may just do that, but that's a beautiful print. I love that. And then he's got one of the Grand Tetons. Yeah, I got it right side up. 
from Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And the top of the mountains are shrouded in clouds, just like, really? Back to the Grand Tetons, <laughs> this photo. The, when we were here, we went out here a few years ago, this whole mountain range was basically shrouded in clouds. The Grand Tetons run up to um, Yellowstone and they start down just west of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And you can, they're beautiful, but like I said, we couldn't see them hardly at all. The, the clouds were a lot lower when we were there, so I didn't even get a decent photo of them like this. This is a gorgeous photo. The high elevation puts snow on them year-round pretty much. As you can see, the lake is green and the mountains are still snow-covered. But now here's the magic. He printed these himself, all right, on his Canon Selfie, let's see, what is it called? Selfie CP1200 printer. These are beautiful prints. They're honestly much nicer prints than the Instax printer that I got for my X-T3. I got the SP3 square format printer for the, that's the, it talks through Bluetooth to your camera. You can print from your smartphone as well, but so if you wanted to like do some editing, you could send the image to your phone, edit it, and then print it all in one location. It's kind of a neat idea, but he's got the selfie and it's making beautiful prints. And I wanted to let Cuban Rum know that I really appreciated him sending this to me. And because I, I, I tried to offer to pay for the lens and I almost made him mad. Um, he wanted to he wanted to give it to me and I didn't actually catch that to begin with so I really do appreciate this I really do so I'm, I'm gonna use it today I'm gonna shoot street photography with it today I'm gonna try to at least I'm gonna play with it on the Z6 and see how focus works matter of fact let's just stick it on the camera right now uh oh <laughs> it don't have infinity focus <laughs> Seems to be focusing about five inches. Where, what's my f-stop at? Oh, I'm shooting wide open. Um, there's something going on here too. I gotta figure out what that whole indexing deal is because I don't know if you can see this or not, but the lens has detents. Maybe it's so you can bring the, the aperture ring to top dead center. Because, yeah, it's got clickable detents, but it doesn't seem to be changing anything with the lens. I guess it is so you can locate the aperture ring to the front so you can see what aperture you're set on once you screw it into the enlarger since it is a screw mount. You know, you can't time it to the front, and that would allow you to bring it to the top like I've done here. I've got another um, helicoid ordered that'll get here in September that's a lot thinner and that'll allow me a lot closer focus, or a lot, it'll get me closer to infinity. This one won't allow infinity focus, but it does do incredible macro. But yeah, I wanted to share that with you, and I do appreciate it, I appreciate it so much. That's awesome. As you guys know, I'm starting a photography project, and I've got um, a couple of books here to share with you. If you haven't looked at this book, this book is very good. It's a, uh, by Brandon Stanton. He started his uh, project in 2010. He actually has a little simple bio on the back. And what he's been doing is he started a blog and he just, he's a banker, works on Wall Street. So he got into street photography from a friend. He tells the story in the front of the book. And um, he says he set on a bad ambitious project, single-handedly create a photographic census of New York City. Armed with a camera, he began crisscrossing the city, and he went to like every part of the city capturing street photos. And what's really great about it is, I don't know if you can see it or not, but like he puts little descriptions on pretty much every image. He'll have some kind of little note that goes along with every photo. But yeah, this is a very good book and it's currently in print. I got this one from Amazon. It was like 15 bucks. It was cheap. It's a really good book. I read it in one day. I like the way he done his framing. You can tell that there, most of them are deliberate photos. He's actually setting them up. Like he'll go out in the middle of a crosswalk when the light allows them to cross 
and he gets the person to go with him and stand in a pose in the middle of the road while either traffic is crossing behind them or they have the long runaway street. He's using it as a framing tool and it looks really good. I like how he's doing that on a lot of the photos. I mean, let's see. Let me find one. Of course, the moment I want to. Oh, there you go. See the guy down here? He does it. See him right here? He does it. Yeah, there we go. But he uses the street the running away street you can tell he's framing them like that on purpose what adds to it heavily is the little notation it because it kind of gives you a little glimpse into who it is another book if you can find a copy is this guy richard avedon's dead now all right he shot for vogue and uh the one before that um not vanity fair if you look him up at all oh harper's bazaar that's it but he shot, he was their photographer for a long time. And he'd done this project starting, I think in 79, and it ran till like 1984. And he went to places all throughout the American West, photographing basically people in front of a white background. And he, what, what he would do was he would engage with them. He set up a huge box camera. If you, if you Google search Richard Avedon in the American West, you, there's a photo that'll populate that shows the camera he used and his assistants and the background. They've got a, they've got a picture of the setup that he used. It was just a pure white background. And he did that in the shade so that there wouldn't be any heavy shadows and that it would isolate the subject so that your focus was on the person. And he did that on purpose. And then what he did was he used a, sp a particular lens that allowed him to get the camera close enough that when he ran the remote release, he would be within about four feet of the subject and he would just stand there and talk to them. And he's shooting eight by 10 negatives. He's shooting large format negatives. So I'm assuming that he has an assistant that when he takes the frame, the assistant changes the negative and resets the camera because you have to cock the shutter on those big format cameras. And he just stands there. In an interview, he said he took 17,000 photos of like 760 or 750 people and he took those photos and built this collection and it's been it's been shown in a bunch of museums it talks about them right here all the museums and but this is a very compelling work this one kind of got me started you can only find these books out of print and they're expensive i paid a, a significant amount of money for this particular book it but if you're if you're into projects like this you got to have a copy of in the american west it's incredible so these are the first two of these kind of project books that i've bought but that's what my project is kind of centric around but i'm going to do it more local to me and i think that's the part that makes it so special is because i'm like mr brandon stanton here is that i live on sam mountain and i know a particular group of people on the mountain and this will allow me to interact with more of them. I don't know how far south down the mountain I'll actually make it, but my plan is, is to go as far south as I can, if I can work it out. But, but I'm, using, I'm using his techniques for collecting photos and his idea to build my story about Sand Mountain. And that's, that's the plan with that. I wanna make my own project based off that concurrent to that like i don't have enough to do already i've started my blog back up on my website i've done like two or three blog posts since i started it just experimenting with it and trying to see if it was something i wanted to fool with and i just didn't have a good subject base i didn't know what i wanted to write about and so I, yesterday it kind of came to me every time i go out shooting street my goal is to get at least one photo that I can upload to my blog. And I'm gonna start photo documenting the blog. And I'm gonna save those photos and hopefully print them in a book form after a year or two years or whatever and do, you know, a year in Chattanooga, if that makes sense. And try and capture the essence of the city based off that. 
I appreciate you guys hanging around while I chat and ramble and talk about things that's been going on. And if you have anything to add, drop it in the comments. I, I'm curious to hear it. You know, you guys are always a lot of fun to talk to. I really appreciate everybody that's logged in. It's just, it's been really interesting here lately. Things have kind of gotten uh, more fun, you might say. I've done a lot of interesting stuff. I am liquidating a large quantity of my old lenses. And it's mainly because they're literally sitting in the cabinet collecting dust. I have I have bought all these lenses over time and reviewed them and messed with them, kind of looking for some vintage lenses, mainly for the X-T3 to shoot, you know, street with. And now that I have kind of found the ones I like, I'm going to get rid of all the ones I don't shoot with. Honestly, I will probably go the easy route, and I'm just going to box them up and send them to either Roberts or KEH. Uh, and uh, just basically trade them in towards credit with the store or something like that, you know. But because it's simpler and easier, and I just don't have time to go through the eBaying process. I was going to eBay on because me and Phil talked about that, and eBay will get me more money. But I'm so busy now, I don't have time to eBay them. Unfortunately, I've started to, and just to build the the build the auctions and then complete them at the end get the payments box them up print labels ship them off i just don't have time so i'm just gonna i'm thinking about seriously just i've done reached out to keh and they told me what to do and i'm thinking seriously about just boxing them up sending them down to keh and let them give me a price <laughs> it'd be simpler now I've got two or three that are really nice lenses, and I probably will all, you know, eBay them. But the bulk of them vintage lenses, the manual ones, it's just not worth my trouble. I mean, most of them I didn't pay that much for anyway, so I don't expect to get much for them, just to be honest about it. And it's just uh, basically turn them into liquid resources so I can put it towards something else for the channel. You know, I can do something different. And get them out of my way <laughs> the cabinet's getting pretty full so with that i appreciate you guys watching yeah and if you haven't done it yet like buttons right down there so it's a subscribe button if you haven't done it yet click click them too and the bell will let you know you know all that all right so until next time get your camera out go take a picture with it okay we'll talk to you later bye bye